Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to another video review and today as you can see on my desk and in my hands I have a pretty beefy RTX 3050 in my hands which I am going to be now reviewing for you so if you're interested stick around because we are going to be checking out the how good is the Asus ROG NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3050 and um, yeah as always I'm gonna leave my uh, Amazon affiliate link down below so you can uh, quickly check it out uh, from there uh, but anyway first things off um, first thing that got caught my eye right um, besides the absolutely massive uh, heatsink that it has are of course the three axial deck uh, fans here and as you can see it uses uh, smaller hub motors here than uh, usual video guards uh, that uh, allow for a longer fan blades um, which will come in handy when trying to get uh, lower temperatures now uh, the middle fan here is also spinning in the opposite direction to the outer ones and the idea here is to reduce the turbulence of the air which will allow for a quieter guard. Also there is a sensor here that will stop all the fans once the guard uh, temperatures uh, fall below 42 degrees celsius. The heatsink is pretty darn massive as well which is very nice to see and also very well built. It is using the max contact technology on the GPU which simply means that the area connecting the GPU has been polished to a mirror finish to help uh, thermal base get uh, a much better contact in the micro scale of things. Uh, something that I could add maybe here is if you look at a heatsink under the microscope which I've uh, done which is a pretty interesting thing to do actually uh, then uh, comparing a mirror finished um, contact to a reg uh, regular one which it hasn't been you know uh, polished to a mirror shine y you can see like uh, craters going it's like a grand canyon on your uh, on your cooler which is uh, pretty insane and all these uh, uh, craters and holes and stuff like that they, all these need to be filled with thermal based now if you polish it to a mirror finish especially under a machine or something like that uh, the, they pretty much don't exist there or or need a really minimal amount of uh, thermal base to actually get a good contact with the um, thing that you want to cool in this case the RTX 3050 GPU right so uh, that's uh, why I really love you know mirror finished um, GPU coolers. Now a few other things to talk about here uh, have to be I guess uh, the fact that it has dual BIOS here which you can actually easily switch uh, between the two with your finger here and also it does have uh, fan header connectors here so you can actually attach uh, proper fans uh, like your case fans that actually then uh, get regulated <laughs> via software uh, by the 3050 so if it feels that it needs uh, more cooling the fan that is connected to the video card will start uh, you know spinning faster which is pretty neat now the BIOS here is um, well you, you can read it's P mode and Q mode right it, it's actually pretty easy to understand performance versus quiet right uh, it, it isn't if you put it in performance it turns into a 3090 what it actually means is if you put it in performance the fan uh, speed RPMs are more aggressive and if you put it into the Q mode uh, or the quiet mode they're you know less aggressive right and um, yeah if you're wondering uh, what the temperature uh, difference and the noise difference is uh, the temperature difference is about like 5 to 10 degrees it's nothing too much but in the quiet mode uh, the card is actually about like three times quieter uh, so yeah I just I, I just leave it in Q mode all the time uh, if or if your PC is already noisy then you know just leave it in P mode right but it's a nice thing to have and many Asus card have the, this dual BIOS switch here so if you're already using an Asus card and haven't really touched upon this thing and you want a quieter PC check it if it's in P mode and switch it to Q mode anyway 
I did a short, quick little uh, benchmarking session for you guys as well on the brand spanking new uh, Intel i9 12900K F. So should be pretty interesting to watch here. Um, nothing too crazy, but let's check out something like Far Cry 6 and you know, how it performs, what the temperatures do. All right, so welcome to the benchmarking section. And as you can see, everything is already set up on my PC here. And the 3050 sitting inside this uh, TUF, uh, Asus is tough, uh, GT301 case with a pretty nice cooling uh, setup. I guess I can get a little bit better cooling if I put the uh, side window on it as well, but I'm gonna just leave it here. There's three 120 uh, millimeter fans blowing here, uh, two 120 millimeter fans blowing off from the CPU here and one in the back as well. So the cooling is pretty decent uh, overall here. But as we can see, before we uh, begin our benchmarking, uh, a quick look at the temperatures and uh, what the uh, temps are doing right now, right? And uh, as you can see, I am using the Intel Core i9-12900KF, which is gonna be boosting up to 5.2 gigahertz uh, while gaming, and it's 8 uh, performance scores, 8 efficient scores, 16 total and 24 threads, so it's a pretty powerful uh, CPU to run a 3050 on. And uh, as you can see, the 3050 is temperatures at the moment, 35.5 degrees. And I'm gonna set it uh, so we can see the maximum here. And if I use my finger here, my finger should not get hurt. Because the fans are not moving. So the fans are gonna uh, start spinning at around 42 degrees. So if your CPU, if your uh, case cooling can, you know, hold the video card cool, blow some air onto it, it'll stay passive and save the fan life, which is totally awesome. And it looks freaking amazing inside the case here. And also, as it is passive at the moment, it's zero decibels. But anyway, let's start the benchmarking here and we're gonna start off uh, with Far Cry 6. And um, straight off, let's head into the options. Uh, we're, go we're gonna be running the benchmark here, but before I'm gonna show you what exact settings I'm using here. I am going to also be screen recording with Shadow Play here, which shouldn't really, um, you know, matter too much, maybe a one to three frames per second in the overall benchmark, but at least you will see a proper in-game recording here. Uh, so 4K resolution, right, 120 hertz at the moment, and everything I have set uh, on ultra detail without HD textures, uh, I'm never using HD textures in any of my Far Cry 6 benchmarks, anti aliasing is turned off, motion blur off, and uh, right now ray tracing is turned off, but we're gonna do a ray trace test as well here. So these are the settings here and uh, let's hit the benchmark. Earlier I also tested out this thing here, it's the 3080 Ti and I ran, ran the same test on in the same PC. So I'm gonna see a little bit of uh, uh, comparison here. Oh, okay, it's a, <laughs> it's a world of a difference. Uh, 25 frames per second, I mean it's hitting that uh, sweet, sweet uh, PlayStation 4 console FPS, uh, which is mostly locked at 30 in most games, right? In some games, it like in Cyberpunk, it dips to 20 and it's almost unplayable, right? But it's like on the borderline of playable at 4K. So I mean 3050, it's not really a 4K card, right? But it can be if you turn down the settings to medium or, or even lower, right? Uh, but yeah, I'm just gonna be focusing on 4K because that's where the future is and we're gonna check out how it runs at maximum detail here. And um, yeah, uh, the benchmark should end any second here and uh, I can then tell you what it exactly scored on the 3080 Ti on the same setup here. Uh, but anyway, uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. average FPS 28. <laughs> Okay, so it hovered almost at the 30 FPS range, right? Uh, dipping a little bit to the 26, uh, I guess, uh, and coming back to 30. So, I mean, we can actually do one more test at the lowest settings, right? Um, let's go into the video settings here. In the quality settings, graphics quality, let's put everything to the lowest settings. Without anti aliasing without motion blur, without ray tracing. Let's run it again. 
Okay, 40 FPS. I mean 35 to 40. It's getting to the playable areas, right? 45 frames per second here at the moment. I mean, it's playable, although the graphics is like from 2007, 8, 9, something like that. Uh, reminds me of Far Cry 3 a little bit. 45 frames per second. I mean, it's kind of fine, right? But as I'm not gonna be testing many games, I, I thought Far Cry 6 is one of the most ideal games to test out a 3050. We can do another test at 1440p, right? And maybe a 1080p test as well. So let's check uh, those, uh, those tests out as well, because it's a really quick test. Gives us a nice uh, overview of what settings actually work uh, the best with a 3050. So 43 frames per second. And of course, you can't, um, you know, I can't dismiss that it is running on a 5.2 gigahertz Alder Lake and well, uh, 900 kf here. Uh, anyway, okay, 43 FPS. All right, let's head back and let's put on 1440p. And let's actually put now everything back to the ultra. So we gained like 10 frames per second, right? Right, something like that, right? So let's put everything back to ultra detail. Uh, let's see, let's, uh, yeah, anti-aliasing is off. And let's take it down to, can I take, uh, I can't, yeah, I can, I can, of course I can. So, 1440p, let's uh, apply changes. Okay, uh, please give me full screen. Uh, this is not exactly what I call full screen. Le borderless, B borderless, yes, F. All oh, right. So, 1440p now. So it's about the same, a little bit better than 4K at lowest detail. 49 frames per second. I mean, it's getting there. Oh God, I can see those zigzags so much clearer here. It's so much lower than 4K. Uh, yeah, it's not as sharp, right? Of course, we could, you know, enable anti-aliasing and it would make it a little bit better. The interesting thing is with the Far Cry 6, there's still no DLSS support. Why is that? Anyway, 50 frames per second, because if there would be DLSS, we could easily enable 4K and uh, just use like medium DLSS and gain almost double the FPS at 4K. Of course, it's, it won't be as sharp, but it's still gonna be pretty sharp. All right, all right, 46 frames per second. Average, and it is, yeah, average 46 frames per second, almost getting to that 50. Let's do the last one, 1080p. Do we get, oh, 60 plus 63. All right, now the 3050 starts to really shine here. So, yeah, totally playable, all right, okay. I, I guess we found the sweet spot for the 3050 in Far Cry 6. It is 1080p at maximum detail. And yeah, if I'd be you and I'd be buying a 3050 or not, well, 900 kf, I'd definitely play on 1080. And uh, maybe I'll lower, like, a 24 inch maybe. So 1080p would actually look sharp, right? On a 65 inch monitor that is here that you can see, uh, yeah, it's a lot of zigzags everywhere. It's not sharp at all, <laughs> but it's really nice and playable. All right, so that is how it fares. So average FPS 62 frames per second. And uh, yeah, I al al also recorded everything. You can add a couple of frames on top without the shadow play recording. But right now you could also see that you can actually record your gameplay easily here uh, without any real performance loss. Uh, so that's also been neat. Anyway, let's uh, quickly run Grand Theft Auto 5 as well and uh, see how it fares there. So let's begin with our Grand Theft Auto 5 benchmarking. And as you can see in the graphic settings, I've uh, turned on 1080p for our resolution today here. 
and without any anti-aliasing uh, everything turned to the most maximum uh, detail possible here we are gonna run through the uh, benchmark and in the advanced graphics uh, also put a pretty maximum so uh, let's run the benchmark and see how it fares all right so 140 frames per second that's absolutely amazing so pretty much you could actually use a 144 hertz screen with Grand Theft Auto 5 here on the 3050 on the 12900 KF and uh, enjoy pretty much 140 frames per second 144 hertz in its total entirety I guess maybe tweak a few settings down to maybe mediums uh, to get stable 150 frames per second so to be above 144 hertz but yeah 130 fps absolutely amazing did not expect this let's check how this last uh, fourth pass of the game is gonna run here and then let's check out what the average frame rate was and then let's check out what the actual temperature of the dirty 50 rose to right uh, but at the moment yeah 120 frames per second i mean i am playing on a 120 hertz uh, screen at the moment here and uh, yeah, it's totally, it, it is 150 when actually playing, right? So this is our actual view when playing the game and oh my god, 170, 160, 150 frames per second easily gets above the 144 uh, hertz threshold rate. Wow, that's an amazing uh, result for a 3050 with 12, uh, 12,900. Of course the 12900 is also running at around 5.2 gigahertz at the moment i presume right mm, so yeah that's a pretty insane combo pretty insane combo to start things off and maybe later uh they turn the 80 ti or something like that right but yeah 180 jesus christ the fps just keeps rising so well a little bit of a hiccup here but i guess this was something to do with my I have not seen this thing before this is a brand new bug for me <laughs> I have never seen the Grand Theft Auto 5's benchmark bug out anyway uh, let's quickly check out what the temperatures did as well and as we can see the temperature 53.8 was the maximum temperature uh, during Far Cry 6 benchmarking during Grand Theft Auto 5 benchmarking and uh, yeah it's just like slightly warm uh, at the moment it is 40.5 degrees absolutely insane cooling solution for the 3050 here anyway that's that's gonna quick uh, quickly conclude my quick uh, little uh, benchmarking section for the 3050 all right so i hope this uh, short quick little uh, benchmarking session uh, helped you with a decision you know should you get this card or not uh, but yeah i mean overall it's a pretty decent card if you want like a hundred different tests to see how uh, how this card performs to a hundred different other video cards of course just google some spreadsheet that has everything tested right you, you need you know the same actual game uh, patch as well um, the same drivers to make it equal right uh, because games you know release patches uh, there's performance updates and then you're comparing uh, cards to some older patches that you know it's not comparable information anymore that's why i don't want to go do crazy with uh, testing video cards uh, but as you could see i mean in Far Cry 6 there was no issue uh, with this card um, now a, a couple of other things that i didn't uh, touch upon in the earlier part of the video is that it has uh, um, three display board uh, 1.4 a's and two hdmi 2.1's so yeah you can easily hook up your big TV that has you know uh, HDMI 2.1 and 4K 120 Hertz right so you can easily game on your big screen uh, TV on your PC through this video card at 120 Hertz at 4K 
and for game shouldn't be that much of an issue if you you know turn down the graphics and uh, enable maybe DLSS or something like that right uh, but still I, I wouldn't really call this a 4k card it's a yeah it's, it's a 1080p or 1440p uh, card for those resolutions at least in my opinion but anyway uh, what are my final thoughts about the Asus S ROG NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3050 uh, well, uh, yeah, I, I'm gonna give it a 9 out of 10, first of all, right? It is a really decent uh, pick if you're looking for a 3050. But uh, I did uh, some searching around, right? I found a 26, some guy who made a 2060 versus a 3050 video. And um, yeah, I, I, I couldn't find a 2060 myself, so I couldn't you know, bring you a proper comparison on a 12900K F here, but I did find a guy who made a pretty, pretty decent video about uh, 2060 versus 3050. What's the difference there, right? The price difference is uh, in my home country here, the 2060 starts at around 350, I'd say 400 euros. And the 3050, about the same, 400 euros. So they're equally priced pretty much. The ROG version, although, uh, does cost about 530. So you're paying about 130 euros premium for this cooling solution in my opinion well worth the money uh, you know just you know good cpu uh, coolers uh, air coolers uh, do tend to cost 100 to 150 euros then yeah i'd say the same goes for uh, video card coolers in my, in my opinion but you can't actually buy you know other uh, coolers so you're stuck with whatever you buy from the shop so 150 euros extra and it also has all the asus's premium pcb parts and stuff like that it's a really really high quality uh, 3050 here uh, but the gaming benchmarks were quite kind of surprising yeah versus the 2060 uh 2060 is still around 10 frames per second better than the 3050 but the 3050 has uh, improved uh, raid racing technology improved dlss technology which you can't just you know get via updating the drivers right uh, but anyway yeah uh, the 3050 rog thumbs up from my uh, from me uh, that's that's gonna conclude my quick little review here hopefully you got some information some good information is this card for you or not and uh, yeah, leave a comment down below if you liked the video, hit the like button and maybe subscribe. Anyway, thanks for watching. See you guys later. Ciao for now.